Hello everyone, my name is Gemman, I'm product manager for The Grid and today, right now, I'm going to give you a short demo of The Grid and introduce some of the main features so that you have an idea of how it works and what to expect. Before we jump right into it, I mean, let's quickly talk about the, the challenge we're addressing, right? So we know that all of you, you're creating more than just a single scenario. You're creating solutions consisting of various scenarios and you create several of these solutions. And ultimately you end up with a make instance looking like this, right? So there's a ton of scenarios. And you can already see it here that your actual landscape consists of more than just scenarios, right? There's several air tables, there's Google Sheets, there's Slack channels, there's calendars, data stores, Salesforce, all that, right? So your landscape consists of all these objects, not only scenarios, and quite some internal like dependencies, direct or indirect, between these objects, creating a certain level of complexity, which we've seen how much time and energy you invest to deal with. But we want to make it simpler. So that's the whole purpose of the grid. So let's see how it works. So what we're looking here is we're having a solution that is an AI powered chatbot, actually various of those that a customer has in place. And as part of this solution, they also log all the requests so that they can like rate them and analyze them and improve the solution. And now to make that solution more scalable, they want to replace that Google sheet by a more scalable solution, basically. So how does it work? I mean, of course, I can jump in here and immediately replace that one module <laughs> to write the data elsewhere. But I'm quite sure that there's various other scenarios that use the same Google Sheet, right? So typically I would have to go back to the list, check for all these scenarios, if they use Google Sheet, if it's actually the same, and then replace it. But with the grid, it's very easier. With the grid, you can simply zoom out of that one scenario and have a look at how it interacts with internal and external objects. So this is what's happening when, when you enter the grid, right? So here, what you're going to see is the scenario itself and the internal and external objects it interacts with. So it's triggered by a webhook. Of course, you can move along and you'll see actually that webhook is triggered by three scenarios. And you'll see the Google Sheet itself. Of course, you can open it if you want to have a look. So no need to have a node in the scenario with the URL. <laughs> and you can see all the scenarios that interact with it. So in total, it's five. And even how. I mean, if you want to look very closely, you can also like look into a specific link. So you'll see the modules of this scenario. So there's two modules that actually one writes to the Google Sheet, it's adding a category and another one is searching rows. But that's like, if you really want to go into details, but overall what you'll see is the list of all the scenarios that read or write from that Google Sheet. So if you wanted to replace it, you know exactly which scenarios to touch. And of course, this works both for like traditional workflows and also if we move along for AI powered workflows. So here, for example, we have an AI assistant, an open a AI, AI assistant. You can also check this one out, of course, it's here. So you'll also see where this is used. And with our most recent edition in Make, the Make AI agents, you'll also see the scenarios that use them and the tools that are being used. So overall, You'll be able to see all these dependencies, all the scenarios using a certain object on first side in the grid. And even if you want to go one level more granular and you're wondering about some of the columns of the Google Sheet, for example, if you can delete them, you'll see on the grid which scenarios use certain columns. 
which I know for Google Sheet is not the most pressing problem, but it also works for other applications like database apps and for example, Airtable. So let me quickly demo that as well. So if you're looking at an Airtable like this, for example, and you're thinking about getting rid of this column, Jira ticket link, you don't need it anymore, it's wrong, it's outdated, something like that. I mean, usually it might take you quite a while to figure out, is this used anywhere <laughs> in my landscape? Am I going to break something when I remove it here? But with the grid, I can simply just jump to the search. Now I forgot the exact name, I think it was Jira ticket link, exactly, and you'll find the attribute itself. Hitting enter, I'll find the table, the four scenarios using the table and that there's exactly one scenario that uses Jira ticket link. So I know which scenario I need to look into before I can replace it or remove it. And finally, some of you I know use HTTP to connect to custom apps or apps for which there's no proper app within make. Also those, if you're wondering how, where is it used, you can use the search in red. So, I have one API which I use for barcode creation. Not exactly sure. Yeah, exactly. That's the name. So also for those, I can figure out which scenarios use this service within the grid. Ultimately, with all of that, I don't have to worry about dependencies anymore. I don't have to worry about breaking something when doing a change. I can do my changes. With confidence. Grid is not only about dependencies though. It also helps you get a better understanding of the bigger picture. So for the very first time there's actually a visual representation of what you're building, of the whole landscape. And the great thing is it's auto-generated and auto-updated. So what you're looking at here should be, yeah, like updated one minute ago. And it's going to be updated all the time, right? And so whenever I come back to a solution, even if I build it, my, build it myself a while ago, I can use the grid to remind myself what does it consist of, how does the data flow, what's part of my solution. So I can quickly understand and jump right in. And even if I didn't build it myself, or even, <laughs> then it's even more, more important that it helps me to understand what others built. And what our users told us, it helps a lot with the collaboration. It creates common visual language for everyone so you can use it for onboarding or offboarding and simply to discuss and explain to others. So if you're moving across your landscape at all times, you can just like zoom in to a given scenario, explain the scenario, go back to the grid and again, zoom into a given scenario and thereby explain how a solution works to a colleague or co-worker or other stakeholders as well. And of course, there's more than just one solution, as I said before, right? So this here corresponds to a folder. Of course, you're having various folders, part of your team. And if you have a team's plan or an enterprise plan, you'll even see the other teams. So you'll always see the whole organization you're running and maintaining. You might ask, but how does it work if I have something that's used in various folders? Also that is taken care of in the grid. So this is an example. You'll see this lunch date has this icon because it's actually part of multiple folders. So you can either click explore button here and click on that and you'll see the other folders in which it's used. So ultimately you'll see the whole organization, which is great because it allows you to analyze certain aspects that are crucial for maintaining it, right? So let's assume there's an app for which you know there's a maintenance window where it might not work. You can easily figure out all of the scenarios using this app or let by filtering. Same you would do um, when you're planning to decommission something. I mean, I don't think you're going to decommission Gucci. 
Um, also, if you only care, let's say, about active scenarios of certain folders, you can easily apply the filter for that and also like realign it if you want to see it all very close together. But let me remove all these filters again. And finally, if you're using, for example, scenario properties, you can also use them to only focus on what's currently considered in production or high priority or both of them. So it helps you analyze certain parts of your organization that are of relevance for you. And on top of that, it helps you to monitor and keep that organization running. For that, we recently added something that highlights on top of grid objects that require your attention. For example, scenarios that were deactivated because of an error, or also scenarios that have unresolved incomplete execution. So you can immediately jump there, tackle them, thereby resolve the issue. And the, the benefit of having these indicators on top of grid is you can immediately spot where in your landscape do you have these issues and also their potential impact on the solution itself. Very soon, something that's going to come to the grid soonish is also a way to visualize and see on top of grid the operations used and also on top of the links, which of the links contribute mostly to that so in case you need to understand better or optimize. So overall, with that, for someone building the landscape or someone tasked with maintaining this landscape, the grid should help them to do so and to keep improving their landscape despite a growing complexity. It's not only for these builders though. There's also other stakeholders that benefit from the grid as we've learned during our initial closed beta phase. One group is security and privacy team. There's a couple of use cases they're very interested in. One of them is understanding how sensitive data is flowing through your system. With the grid, you can easily, for example, figure out, okay, there's my Salesforce contacts. They contain sensitive information, and then I can follow along my solutions and, and investigate where the data is flowing. Another use case for them is understanding, for example, where AI is used across the whole organization. So again, leveraging the filter, you can make sure that you find easily all the automations you have that leverage AI. And finally, Grid also is very helpful for the senior IT leads responsible for make overall. Grid gives them observability and transparency into what's happening across the platform. They can understand, as I said before, also like operation consumption, they can understand problems. And most importantly, they know that the, the natural inherent complexity won't slow them down. At any point in time, someone can come in, understand what's happening, contribute, improve the architecture as well. So ultimately, they get the confidence that with Make and the Grid, they can just keep scaling their usage. So this has been a short or not so short demo of all some of the main capabilities of Grid. Um, I hope you liked what you saw. I'm really looking forward to having you use the grid and hearing your feedback in the future. Thank you so much.